Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable hedgehog and do a loop stitch which looks difficult but it is quite easy and it's very good for creating texture. In order to make this adorable hedgehog, here's what you're going to need. So first of all you're going to need a piece of fabric, make sure it's big enough to go over your embroidery hoop. I like to use scrap fabric so it doesn't go to waste, but use whatever fabric you feel. Next you'll need your embroidery hoop some fabric scissors and your embroidery needle. And the last thing you're going to need are three colours. So I'm using wool but you can use embroidery thread so you're going to need a pink for the body of the hedgehog, a brown for the fur of the hedgehog or the spikes and a darker colour I'm using grey for the outline of the hedgehog and his eye. In the video description, I've included a printable or downloadable template so you can either trace it off your computer screen or print it out and trace it onto your fabric, whichever is easier. Um, there's three sizes to choose from, so pick whichever one you want. If this is your first time, I recommend a bigger one so it's not quite so fiddly. Um, don't worry that he looks a bit like a naked turtle. He looks a bit like a turtle without a shell. Um, this is because the stitch we're going to be doing, loop stitch, adds the texture. So don't worry, trust me, and I promise he'll look more like a hedgehog by the end. So use the template to trace this onto your fabric. Place your fabric into your embroidery hoop, making sure it's as taut as possible. Keep adjusting, keep pulling the fabric and keep twisting to make it tighter just to make sure you've got the best tautness to your fabric. The tighter it is, the easier it is to sew. Take the pink thread and thread your needle. What we're going to do now is do straight stitches across the tail and the head of the hedgehog. Make sure to secure your stitch by doing one smaller stitch over the top of the end of the thread. This will secure your thread and help you to hold it in place. Create some straight stitches from one side of the tail to the other, following the outline. Make them as straight as possible and keep them as neat as possible and when finished move across to the head and do exactly the same on the head. Once you've finished with the pink, a way to secure your thread is to push it through the stitches you've made in the back of the fabric. Make sure you pull it all the way through and then you can snip it and this will keep it nice and safe for when you start your next colour. 
Using the brown thread now, we're going to do a few stitches in the bottom to give the hedgehog some legs. These aren't going to be seen quite as much as the tail and the head, but it just gives him a bit more shape and makes him look, look more lifelike. So take your brown thread and thread the needle, thread it through the back of the fabric, and I tend to do about four or five straight stitches for each foot. He's starting to look a bit more hedgehoggy now. So the next stitch is going to be a loop stitch and this will add the texture. It looks quite difficult but I'm going to explain it as best I can. So the first thing you need to do is come up through the fabric with your thread and go back down as though you're doing a small straight stitch. Before you pull the thread all the way through, make a little loop and hold on to that with your thumb. What you're then going to do is come up in the middle of the loop. So you're going backwards on yourself and coming up through the middle of the loop. My videoing of this wasn't the best and I didn't realise until after I'd finished. So don't worry, I'm going to show you that more clearly again in a minute. Okay, so hopefully I can get this more clearly this time. So, come up in the middle of your loop. Make the loop, so go back down, keep hold of the end of the loop before you pull the thread all the way through. Come back up in the middle of that loop that you've just made. And with that stitch, it's called a securing stitch. So just secure the right hand side of the loop by going back down over the top of it and pulling it all the way through. You'll see that your loop is now secure and isn't going anywhere. To start the next loop, you need to come back up in the middle again. Each loop starts in the middle of the previous loop, okay? So come back up in the middle of your previous loop Pull the thread back through the fabric, but keep hold of the end of the loop. Come back up again in the middle of that loop and make your securing stitch by going from the middle of the loop to the outer right hand side of the loop. This will secure the stitch in place. Again, just to show you one more time, come up in the middle of the previous loop, back down to the right hand side, and then your securing stitch goes through the middle, out to the right hand side, securing that loop. Try and make sure that all loops are the same height and same width apart, otherwise you'll end up with a hedgehog that's maybe balding or a bit naked. Once you've finished your first row following the outline, you can see this does give a really good texture and you can see now he's starting to look more like a hedgehog. So to start your second row, it's exactly the same process, except you're going back from right to left. Just make sure to hold the previous loops you've done out of the way, otherwise it can get very tangled and confusing. Keep everything clear, keep everything out of your way so you know where your next stitch is going to land. If you ever pull your thread too tight and lose your loop, don't worry, just do exactly what I'm doing here and pull it back through a little with your needle until it's the same height as all your other loops. Then make your securing stitch.
It's difficult to judge how much thread you'll need with a stitch like this because you don't know how long your loop's going to be until you start doing them. So if you do run out of thread, just make sure you tuck the old thread into a stitch you've made before just to secure it so it doesn't come loose whilst you're sewing. You can now start again with another piece of thread, just make sure to secure it at the beginning and just continue until your entire hedgehog is fully covered. Look how good he looks. I mean, I know I'm biased because I made him, but I'm sure yours looks just as good. I really like this technique when making fluffy animals or anything fluffy if you want textured flowers. It's a really effective way to add more texture to your sewing. The next thing we need to do is give him a face and an outline. So you're going to need to take your gray thread and thread your needle. For his eye, I recommend you do about three or four smaller stitches just on top of each other to create the eye and you can give him a mouth if you want. Again, just a couple of stitches where you think his mouth should be. For the outline, we're going to use something called stem stitch. It's a bit difficult to show you on the hedgehog because he's so textured so if you don't get it from this video go to my dinosaur video and it's a lot easier to see. So for stem stitch what you need to do is you create a loop similar to the loop stitch but when you come back up through the middle of the loop you pull the thread all the way so that it's tight, it's taut, it's lying flat with the fabric. You then do this again, you make another stitch, come back up in the middle of the stitch and you'll see this makes like a chain effect and makes a really good outline stitch. Again, make a small loop, come back up in the middle of the loop and pull the thread tight with the fabric.
be sure to secure your final thread and there he is, he's finished. As I said previously, this is a really good stitch for texture um, and you can leave it like this. I think it looks quite effective, it looks very hedgehog-like. So this type of stitch can be used to make petals for flowers, as I've done here. I should have ironed them really so you can see, but yeah, it makes very good petal effect. However, if you snip the loops, you get this fluffy effect like I've done with these here. And as you can see, I did on this um, tote bag, I used wool again and I snipped so that you have this fluffy textured effect. So it's up to you how you do your hedgehog. You can either leave him like this or you can experiment with snipping the loops and he'll look more fluffy. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, my Instagram is at the pre -loved cat, or you can find me on Etsy. Just type in pre -loved cat. I'd love to know what you thought. Comments down below. You can send me pictures of uh, if you've used this technique. And give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget as well, in the description, I've put the link to the template for the hedgehog if you need help drawing him. Thanks again for watching, bye!